Journalism shapes events as well as documenting them. And for that reason, it's also important to keep a good record of it. If you look at the role of journalism in everything from decisions to go to war to political campaigns, um, that's something we really need a record of so that we can go back and look at it and see how journalism shaped our actions and formed public opinion. I think that a record of journalism um, and of journalistic findings is a critical supplement to um, the documentation of the working of government, for example, and the records of government. It's a way of documenting um, the work uh, and actions of individuals and corporations and other groups that are not part of the public record per se, but whose actions affect the public in numerous and critical ways. Um, I think these are some of the um, some of the kind of special aspects of journalism, and I think that when you look at the record, the journalistic record, that is something that every individual in our society may need to go back to. It's certainly essential for scholars. Scholars use it heavily. Scholars in many, many disciplines use it extensively and in some extraordinarily creative ways sometimes. But um, it, it really belongs to the society as a whole, not simply uh, to the province of scholars and researchers. In the old days, if you'll allow me the term, when you had a newspaper and that was the news, or when you watched a TV broadcast and what you saw in that broadcast was the news. Now the news is actually these very complicated multimedia databases that are assembled and presented in a wide range of contexts. They're actually, in fact, not even presented the same from viewer to viewer or reader to reader um, when you get on the web. Um, these are customized to the demographics, tastes, interests, preferences of the viewers as far as the sites can ascertain them in many cases. So we really need to be able to understand not just what's in these observable manifestations, uh, but what's really in the databases that drive these kinds of manifestations. I think there is a genuine problem here. I think that there are some organizations, and certainly the Internet Archive, you know, um, holds a very special place, and um, we owe a very special debt to the initiative and the work of the Internet Archive. Um, in trying to help with this situation. The Library of Congress, um, through its uh, copyright deposit arrangements, and you see similar things in other countries with national libraries who are using copyright deposit as a way of collecting some news. What they're, do what they're doing helps too. But um, we need a much more broad-based and robust approach um, than just relying on a couple of these institutions. So I think we do need to press for some of these public policy kinds of questions. Um, but I also think that we need to talk about norms and behaviors, about responsible actions by journalistic agencies or organizations and the corporations that own them. I think we need to be struggling also with some of the conceptual underpinnings here, like um, how do we document the history of journalistic output in a world of personalization or in a world of highly networked news where you see reportage intermingled with evidence that underlies and supports that reportage but also gives the reader or the viewer or the consumer of the news the opportunity to go back and revisit the underlying um, documents or press conferences or whatever themselves. The answers are going to be different at different scales. I think that the dilemmas of what to do with the enormous databases being amassed by some of the really large media properties, you know, CNN, ESPN, um, uh, um, the major um, news services like Bloomberg or the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times, there's one set of answers, I think, that will come into play for those. Um, there's a very different 
set of answers for some of the journalistic enterprises that operate locally at much smaller scale and that frankly have had, you know, 20 years of intense economic pressure of getting squeezed, of losing revenue sources like classified ads to other, um, other venues and other mechanisms. Um, those folks are, you know, skating right on the edge all the time and um, we've seen lots of closures of uh, various kinds of local news outlets, be they newspapers radio station, television uh, over the past decade. Um, some of these may actually move into something that starts to look a lot like a not-for-profit mode um, and indeed may ultimately end up doing that. That's not to say that they don't do things to generate revenue to um, to uh, pay their employees and their expenses. All not-for-profits not have to do that. But um, perhaps they, um, they, they more explicitly bring to the fore that um, public good and public service character. There, there may be a very powerful network of alliances that occur um, with local public libraries, historical societies, um, local or regional universities. Um, all of those are natural natural partners in um, uh, getting a handle on preserving this, uh, this digital journalism.